Do you know the story of a daughter-in-law who honored her mother-in-law until the end? So come with me, let's open the great book! This is Naomi. She was married to Amlek and they had two sons, Malon and Kilian. They were Hebrew from Bethlehem, Judah, but they left to live in Moab, a foreign country. One day, Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. After some time, Naomi's sons, who had grown up, met two Moabite ladies and got married. Kilian married Orpha, and Malon married Ruth. They were both beautiful ladies. After 10 years living in Moab, Kilian and Malon also died, leaving Orpha and Ruth as widows. That's so sad! Now, they were three widows. Do you know what the life of a widow was like in those times? Back then, women worked only at home. They didn't have a profession, so they depended on their father until they got married. After getting married, the husband was the one to provide. This way, a widow completely depended on other people's help. And now what? What is going to happen to Naomi, Orpha and Ruth? Let's see what happened. Naomi then makes up her mind. She tells her daughter-in-law, I'm a widow, just like both of you. I'm going back to my homeland, Bethlehem, Judah, to find a relative to help me. It would be wise if you do the same. Go back to your parents' house, or you might starve with me. This way you can get married again. But they cried a lot, saying they didn't want to leave her. And Naomi said, you should go to your relative's house. Do you think it's possible for me to get married again and have two other sons for you to get married to them? Imagine how long it would take. But they cried even more. And not having another option, Orpha said goodbye to Naomi and went back to her parents' house. But Ruth stayed with Naomi. So Naomi patiently advised her again, saying, Ruth, do as Orpha, go back to her parents' house. But Ruth had already decided in her heart that she would stay with her mother-in-law, so she answered, Do not insist on that. Wherever you go, I'll go. Wherever you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I'll die, and I will be buried with you. And may God deal with me severely if anything but death separates you and me. Wow, Ruth was so faithful to her mother-in-law. She really decided to stay with her. When they arrived in Bethlehem, it was harvest time, and the women in the village were bustling because of Naomi and Ruth. And Naomi told them, Don't you call me Naomi anymore. From now on, call me Mara, which means bitter, because so many terrible things have happened to me lately. After finding a place to stay, Ruth told Naomi, I will look for a field to see if I can get some leftover grain for us. And Naomi agreed and blessed her. When she found a field, she started to follow one of the harvesters to get the grains that fell on the ground. At this moment, the owner of the field arrived. He was a rich man, and his name was Boaz. When he was greeting the harvesters, he saw Ruth and asked them about who she was. And they answered, This is a Moabite lady. She came here with Naomi, her mother-in-law. They are both widows, and she asked us to get the leftover grain that fall on the ground, and we let her. She's been working non-stop since early this morning. So, Boaz told her, You can stay with my servants here. Don't go to another field. It can be dangerous for you. Here, you have water, 
food, and you can get as much grain as you need. Ruth was pretty happy with that and thanked Boaz, saying, That's so kind of you, my lord. Why should I deserve your help since I am a foreigner? And he said, My servants told me what you've been doing for your mother-in-law and how faithful you've been to her, leaving your homeland behind to stay with her and come to an unknown land. May God repay you as richly as you have been looking for his refuge. Ruth was very happy with everything that was happening. And for her surprise, by lunchtime, she also received a complete meal, eating until satisfied. When she went back to work, Boaz ordered his servants to let some grain fall on the ground on purpose so that she could get them and take them to her mother-in-law. And they did it. She was so happy. When she arrived home, she had great news to tell Naomi. When Naomi saw the amount of food she had in her hand, she was amazed, saying, Where did you get so much grain? That's a lot, God be praised. And she said, I worked in the fields of a man called Boaz. And Naomi said, You won't believe it. Boaz is our relative. He belongs to my husband's family. And Ruth said, Mmm, he took care of me in his field and let me get all the grain that fell on the ground. And he also gave me a large meal. And Naomi explained to Ruth about the Hebrew culture. Ruth, here in my homeland, this is how it works. When a woman becomes a widow, her husband's closest relative takes care of her and becomes her redeemer. Boaz will be your redeemer. Stay in his fields because he will take care of you. So Ruth continued working Boaz's fields until the end of the harvest. This was the way she brought food to her mother-in-law and herself. Over time, Boaz observed Ruth's faithfulness and that she was a virtuous woman, so he decided to ask her to marry him. That was total happiness, and it didn't end here. After they got married, Ruth and Boaz had a son called Obed. Do you know who was Obed? He was King David's grandfather. Yes, that's right. Ruth was David's great-grandmother. That's the way she was in Jesus' genealogy. Wow, what an amazing story. God himself provided her rescue in a totally unexpected way. Ruth's faithfulness was honored and she became a relevant person in the history of Christianity. God be praised, he turned sadness into joy, he turns crying into laughter, he provides to the hungry, hallelujah! Did you have fun? So press the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. See you soon. Bye!